Hi everyone, this is Colleen with Designs of Value Art School. Today we're going to uh, go ahead and start our painting of our hollyhock. And this is the design, the photograph that we're going to be using. I did do a graphite so I can kind of visualize in my mind's eye where the lights and darks are. So we'll use that as a resource. And then I did do a video for YouTube on how to choose your colors. And so we've already got our paint chip started there, plus we've got our color map started. So we're doing pretty good here. Uh, we've got a step ahead. So let's go ahead. And I believe what we're going to do here, so I'm going to set this this way. So we're going to start on this We'll start on this small petal up here because that is a smaller one. And we're going to do wet on wet first. And then we're going to pull out the highlights. So we're going to do the entire petal wet on wet. So we're going to add our water and our blending and glazing medium right up to the edge. Let's just do the very top of this petal first. So there is an underside to it over here, and you can see me do that, I hope. Okay, so we'll move this up a little bit so you can. I have just a tinge of green in my blending and glazing medium, which probably won't hurt. You'll be able to see me a little bit better as to where I've got my water and where I don't. So this is wet on wet, and since it's the first time I've used this watercolor paper, which by the way is Arches 140 pound cold press, that's my favorite. Um, I always like to double wet it. Let it soak in a little bit, and then we're good to go. Arches watercolor paper is phenomenal. It can take a lot of water and since this is the block I don't have to stretch it or tape it down or anything like that so I've gotten really spoiled with the and I'm just looking at the side of my paper to make sure it is completely covered but with the block then you can be really spoiled and not have to stretch it or anything which I love Okay, so our first color on our color map, which I want it to be fairly light. So we're going to do uh, quinacridone, magenta, and a lot of water. There's my little chip here. There it is. Yeah, that's about right. We need more water though. So we're going to just lay this in and let the water do its thing. Which is really nice. Okay, now I'm going to let that set up for a second. And then there's a very light highlight right here that I want to be sure and get out. So I don't want to leave that. And what I'm doing is wiping my brush on my baby cloth. If you followed me you'll know that I use cloth baby diapers and they really absorb. You can use them and use them and use them. I've had the same two packs for like ever. So now that my brush is drier 
than the paper, I should be able to lift. This is called lifting this color out. So and as you pull that color out, then you want to wipe your brush out. Or you could be just reestablishing. This might have to set up a little bit more to get more color out of there. We're going to let that set up for a second. But you want your brush drier than your paper. You want it to be clean. And then every time you pull that color out, you want to wipe your brush off because you don't want to reapply the color you just pulled out when you go back in. That's better. It's pulling up more paint this way. But this is how we're going to attack our highlights. It's by pulling out color. It's getting better each time I do it, so that's a good sign. very light colored um, petal to begin with so okay now there's it's a um, lighter down here yet and then there is a dark area over here but we're going to let that rest of that one dry so we're going to skip over to another petal so that we don't disturb what we've done there Clean my brush. And we'll see how we like this once it's dried. Wet my petal. Just a little bit of a green cast to it, so it's easy to see. Which that doesn't hurt. Almost goes right off the board there. Right up to your edge. Because if you left a dry spot, unfortunately, it's going to look very strange when it dries. Let that set up for a moment. I think I missed this spot over here a little bit. Yeah. We'll let that set up and then we'll go ahead and do our second glaze. And then we can start with our color. Now this petal is darker on the edges again, little bits, not all the way across, but little bits, and then darker in the center. Pretty similar that way, so. And this is what you have to do, is you have to break down your design petal by petal to see where we're going. And make sure we've got everything covered. The way the picture looks. I mean, we don't have to be completely married to the picture. 
I'm not going to do, well, I, don't, I shouldn't say that because I don't know yet. Um, when we get to the end, we'll decide if we want to do a background on this or not. I might, I might not, depending on how I like the design once it's painted. If it needs a background, we'll do a background. Kind of the opposite of what I did with the daylily. The daylily, I did the background right away and then put the daylily on top. All right, so we got our second glaze in there. I'm going to change brushes. That one I was using on a different project that was kind of a rough surface. So I'm going to go to a different brush. Starting to lose its point, and I don't want that. Okay. So we're going to start out fairly watery. So we want to get some of those colors in here. But where I want my darkest value is I'm going to lay my brush down first. And we're going to get some of those streaks in there. That's another thing you want to look at. Are the streaks going to one direction or the other? On this side, they're kind of going this direction. On this side, they're kind of going this direction. So that's something you have to pay attention to as well. Because you, these are just the beginnings of those streaks, but you want to make sure they're going the right way. kind of a fold here. So we're going to create that as we go. Okay. Now, while that's still wet, and I actually dry my brush out a little bit so I don't have too much water in it. I want this to be darker. And these are going right to the inside here, so we want to make sure we do that. Create that fold a little bit. It's fairly dark down this edge. Just want to get some of those nuances in there before we really go crazy with a lot of glazes. 
Again, this is just our beginning here. Don't want any hard edges. Adding in where the darks are. There's one dark one that comes all the way over here, right underneath this petal. And then it does get darker as it comes down underneath that petal too. There's a lot more streaks in here than what we're doing now, but like I said, this is just the beginning. Okay, as long as we're having such a good go at it, let's go back and do this one. Hopefully, I just got my brush straight up and down at a 90 degree angle to get that darkness in there and that line work. Now it won't disperse then because it is dry there. It's not going to disperse as if it were wet on wet. So okay, now we need to add some water to this petal. And this is our center here. So we're going to be going around that center. Got a hair in there, so I'm going to get that out. You always want to do that right away. This actually goes right up underneath this part of the petal. I should say flip because that's what that is, is a flip. Okay, as I look at the side, it looks like it's pretty good, so we'll let that set up for a moment. Now this one is actually going to, um, some of these streaks are going to go this way, a lot of them go this way as they go around that corner. So it's always important to look at your streaks and see how we're headed with those. Making sure I get a lot of water around there so this disperses real softly. You don't want puddles at the bottom, but you want to make sure it's wet. There we go. That looks good. So we're going to start with the lightest color first. It's going to make some more of that as we go here. I 
And again, whenever I pick up my paint, I twirl it to a point. Wherever you want it to be the darkest is where you're going to set it down first. It's pretty dark over here. It's pretty light, so we're going to add just a bit more color to it. That's better. And again, those are judgment calls you need to make. As you put your color down. If you need more color, add more color. Now we're going to add some more dark. This one doesn't have a whole lot of dark, but we do want to get that in there. Especially with this um, wet on wet, because that will disperse and become very soft. But you'll have a couple different values in there. Which is exactly what you want. Don't forget value is what creates form. Let me just soften these out a little bit here. And if you don't like something that you've got in there, don't forget you can clean your brush, dry wipe it so you drier than the paper, and you can just pull it out. But wipe your brush in between, or you're going to just reapply that paint where you just took it out. Okay. So we'll get that wet. This is really turning out to be a lovely piece. I put it on that smaller paper um, because I want to float it onto a, a mat board and I might put it up on top of the mat board and then put another one underneath it with similar colors. See how I like that. It's always fun to map them a little bit differently. Now this one is fairly dark in here and over here, but then out here it becomes fairly light, so. And we got our first glaze. Oh, I missed some section in the middle. It's always good to double check yourself. There we go. Okay, we're going to let that set up for a moment. I'm going to put the picture right underneath here so you can see it at the same time I'm painting in the same direction. Value first. 
pretty much the same on each one. Lay it down where we want it to be the darkest, which is down here. And that comes all the way out to here. And it does butt up against this one. So we want to get a streak in there. And then right in here, it just kind of tilts over this direction. Almost creates a flip in there. separate this one so you can see what's happening with it. Bits. Let's took it off. This does come all the way down on this edge here. You can see me, and it looks like you can. I could actually bring it down a little bit better. There we go. All right. Okay. Now the darkest area seems to be right in here, so we'll start there, and this is going to be just our first layer of paint on this. So now I want to make that just a tad darker, so I'm going to add a little bit more indigo and a little bit more of the neutral tint. And a lot less water. So I just made a darker version, dried my brush out so it wouldn't have so much water in it, and then that'll make it darker, which 
which is a good thing. Add some dark in here where it needs it. Right over in here. All right, I got everything nice and dry, and we've got the full layer of everything except the centers. So it's time now to erase. So I've taken my favorite Castell dust-free white eraser. Push it up a little bit more. I've been using it so much. There we go. That's better. I always wipe off the the dark things so it doesn't spread, especially on a painting that you've been working on. And probably sounds like I'm really scrubbing. I am not. I'm just gently erasing like I would erase anything else off a piece of paper. A small, nice point bristle brush. Watercolor brush, I should say, rather than bristle. And we're going to put in some of these dark values. Now I mixed up some of the color. I'm going to mix up just a little bit more because as I go around it's going to be quite a bit. <clears throat> we're going to do this on every petal. So it's your ma straight magenta, very little water if at all possible, and then your neutral tint. And the neutral tint is going to bring the blue value in and darken that color just enough. And that should be enough. Now I like to pull the lines towards me. some of my blending and glazing medium just to get my water and my brush wet. And of course you want to bring it to a point. So we'll start right here on this one. It's got some dark streaks to it. So this is, and again you can have it up like this. To begin with I'm going to just start like this. See what a nice point that has. And we're going to go right on top of the colors we've already got in there. Okay. Yeah, that's going to darken that nice. Now some of these are darker, like right in here, and then this would be darker in this way. But you don't want to lose all your lights, for sure. You want to keep your lights as best as possible. Get that one a little darker there. It does get a little thicker down here. It needs just a bit more water. There we go. It is darker over here. 
And of course some of this center then is going to go over this dark here. All right. Some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. None of them come all the way to the bottom. Yeah, now I can tell it's wet. So I jumped up to a size 8 just because I wanted to get enough water on there that I needed. And this is going to be a fairly light glaze. Which means we're going to have water in there. There's water on the paper and we're going to have water in our brush. And this size 8 holds a lot of water, which is good, because that's what I want. Now, this has to be done very gently or you could lose all of the values that you have done down below and you don't want to do that. So I'm just dropping it in. I'm not moving it with the brush, I'm just dropping it in to the wet. I did hold my paper and I only did one water glaze um, up to the light so I could see to make sure it was covered. We're going to go right over that dark because that will blend it all in together. And we're basically just letting our water do our work for us here again. Making sure it's going to cover all of those areas. Okay, now I'm looking back. We do have that highlight here, but there is a little bit of a dark up here, so I'm just going to fill that in up on top. Okay, we're going to let that set. Now let's move up to this portion. Clean my brush. Get some clean water in it. Now this area is smaller, so you don't need a lot of water. And we do not want to go all the way down to this. Again, you don't want to lose your lights. I know I keep saying that, but that's important in this design. It's real hard to tell that this is wet, so I'm going to be lifting it up. Yeah, we worked too hard to lose all the work underneath, for sure. So this, again, is just going to be dropped in. If you start um, moving it around with your brush, you're going to lose those streaks underneath. So just drop the color on where you want it to be darkest. You want to start there first. And this is going to kind of join everything together. And I'm just looking to see where, how far down it comes. And I think it needs just a bit more water down there. So you can just pick up the edge of that paint. Bring this up so you can see me. I'm just picking up the edge of that paint so it won't dry hard. I just want it to have enough water to move into. Okay. Now this one could actually have that done to it again too. It seems to be a little drawing it a hard line there and I don't want that. So it's always important to look back at what you've just done as well in case you need to fix that so there's a soft line on there. Okay, those two look good. Those two places on that one petal look good. So now we're going to move on to the next, well actually let's jump over to this end petal. I don't want to disturb that 
while it's on drying. So we're doing this petal, which is this petal, and I'll bring it into camera's view here so you can see it. We're going to be doing this petal, and it's right here. So we're going to start with the top. It's got some some highlights over here that we're not going to want to necessarily lose, so we're going to ignore that area. And again, this is just a soft water glaze, and I mean, I am barely touching the surface. That's why I'm having a hard time seeing if it's wet or not, because I'm not applying so much water. But there again, I don't want to lose everything I put down underneath it. I can actually see that this time. Good. Okay, so we're going to go in and pick up some of that color. And this is just our very basic first color that we used, which was uh, Conequidone Magenta and a lot of water. We're just going to drop it in. And this kind of brings everything together here. And this side's darker, so we're going to go down here a little bit more. And I still got water there, so that's a good thing. Won't dry. Okay. Now we'll keep an eye on that as we do the bottom of the petal so that it doesn't dry in a harsh line. We're going to clean our brush. I'm using the same brush to apply the water glaze because it's so nice and large. And we're doing this one again. So the bottom of that left hand side is nice and dark. So we'll get some water over here. We'll bring it out just a little bit further. And it comes all the way over to here. There's one light in there you do want to jump. This is right here. There is some over in here. It's not real dark on the bottom down here, so we're going to do it just like that. These are going to be different values again. Again, it doesn't matter. It actually adds a little bit of depth to the painting. So it's got different values in it. Okay, that's going to be quite pretty. We're going to let that do its thing. Looks like I might have already done some of this, but we're going to do some more. So it looks like it could use it. Almost did the picture. Um, okay, so we're going to go right up till here, underneath that flip. kind of a repetitive process, but it certainly is lovely when it's done. And we do have some color down in here, so we'll do this. Kind of gently sweeping it where it needs to go. Gently laying it in. I 
and this is light enough once we do do our centers with the yellow we should be yellow and gold um, we should be good with this without a doubt Looks like the water's drying into a hard line, so I'm going to just clean my brush, smooth that out. There we go. Starting to look good. Okay, so we've got this petal. I think we're going to do this one again too. It needs to have a little bit more. And this looks like it needs some color here, like I might have stuck my hand in it or something. So we'll soften that in. Add some more color. and do actually what it is is it's this portion of the petal that doesn't the petal comes in at an angle here and then the other petal comes in as an angle so it creates a see-through area it doesn't fill in that entire section so let's do those I think we're going to do them with kind of that sappy green and then we can put a yellow tip on the end of them. That's pretty much the way they look to me. So I'm going to grab my mixing brush and make a little bit more of that green because we're going to need it. And don't forget sappy green. I just used the hookers and the lemon yellow. And it made that sappy green. Sure, we got enough of the color here. All right. Just cleaning out my mixing brush so it's nice and clean for the next time I want to pick it up and use it. I'm going to go down to a number two for this. Not that it's that small an area, it's just, it's going to be wet on dry. Yeah, that'll be a pretty color for this. We'll do one flower at a time and then we'll come back and put in the yellow on the tips. this one here but we'll recreate it all right so let's go ahead clean my brush and I think all we need to do is pick up that straight yeah Centilar yellow light. So we want that tip to be a nice bright yellow. And by putting it in while it, the green is still damp, this will let them soften it in to each other, which is good. Okay, I'm liking that. The burnt sienna color center. 
And what I did was I took our dark purple and I added in a touch of the alizarin crimson and then a touch of the sepia. And that kind of gave me this color, which I think is going to be perfect. It still ties back into the purple, so that's what you kind of want to do. And now this is going to be wet on dry. So your brush and your paint is going to be wet. But your paper is going to be dry. I'm using a six. And we're just going to stipple right around. Not in this area over here because it doesn't seem to have it there. And stippling is just where you're straight up and down bouncing with your brush. There's just a small line of this over here. So we'll put that in. There might be just move some of that paint around so it's evenly colored here. Um, just a touch out here, not a lot. There we go. Okay, we're going to let that set up for a second. And as we do then, we're going to go over to this one. This has got some of the same colors, and it actually goes up quite a ways on the center here. We'll put that in right away as long as we're using the same color. And again, it's wet on dry. Does come up quite a ways. Now over in this other corner, right in here, it gets much darker, so we're gonna make it just a tad darker with less water and more paint. There we go. Kind of let those colors blend together there. But this comes up here too. Some of it is almost a stippled area as well. Okay, and then there's a real dark area, it's almost like a little stem that's almost black. We're going to try the sepia and see how that looks all by itself. Got a feeling it should be just right. There we go, that should be pretty good. It might not be quite white is dark so we'll add just a little bit of the neutral tint. Yeah, that's better just a touch of the neutral tint so that's what we're doing here and it's right here just a little comes right out to the edge actually goes past the edge Now let's 
we use the for this color similar yellow light and golden ochre so that's the color we're going to use to stipple on the next section of the centers and you know what I am going to take this color and there's a couple spots in here that are darker again you want to think about values you the more values you have the less flat it looks so we'll do that Centler yellow light and the gold ochre which is right next to it on my palette there we go oh yeah that's going to be just right and I can always add water to it to lighten it if I need to so we'll start out dark and go a little bit lighter just to give it some depth and again it's going to be wet on dry paper so we're going to start over here this is going to tie those tips in as well going to do that over on this edge too just because I want some different values in start like this and then we'll add more water to it and we'll be good now this kind of comes over the top here so we're going to do that there we go make sure you can see me bring this right up to that center okay now we're just going to add a little bit more water to this give us a different value of the same color remember the more water you add to something the lighter it becomes yeah that's good And it wouldn't hurt to leave some of the white show through either because that's another value and I'm going to do that over here like that now if we need to put any more detail in there we can Now we want it to be a little darker. That's not going to work. There we go. There's one. So this is the color we've been dealing with. Let's see what adding this color to the edge does once. This is Opera Rose. It's a little bit more pinky, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. It still needs to be darker than that. The other color I have here is Helios Purple, so let's try that. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it. I'm going to try some of the Centaur Blue. See, now that's a little darker, isn't it? Just a touch more blue to it once. Yeah, I like that. That's the color we're going to go with. And it'll be, like for example, just on this petal, it would be just up to this area. Same thing here. It's just going to be in the centers. It just seems to be a little darker in those areas, so that's what I want to do. I'm going to make up a little bit more of this while we're doing it. I 
So let's And we're going to glaze this, so we're going to get it wet first. I'm going to start on this one up here. And again, this is going to be just in the center areas. I just want to give them some more depth so that they seep in. Let me see that I've got that. the side of that and make sure it's covered where I want it to be and it seems to be. And I'm using the water with the blending and glazing medium because I want to get that in there. And I do need to add just adding some more color to it all. So hopefully we'll have enough for a while. There we go. Now we're ready to start. Now I've got my water on there, so I'm going to pick up my size 6 brush. Pick up some color. Bring my brush to a point. Let's make sure you can see me. It looks like you can. We're going to just drop this on. So we want this to go a little bit further out. See it comes to about here so and this dark will make this petal set in underneath the center which is exactly what we're trying to accomplish here. Definitely want this center area to be fairly dark. As it comes out, it can lighten. And then if we have to go back in and do our dark streaks again, we will. And it looks like we might have to. And that's okay. We want to make sure this folds down and creates that depth that we're looking for. So water first. So it's pretty much dark in the center, and that's about it. It's not really crazy dark like those other ones. A little bit of dark there. Okay, so we're going to start with the darkest one first. And it's right in this area. There is a little dark over here. And just a tad out there. Now we can go in and pick up the lighter of the two. Let those drop in and blend together. Just going to give this a little bit more water to blend into so it doesn't have a harsh line. It's nice and cool and dried. And now I have decided to go ahead and do a few more dark streaks. Some of these are fairly dark. 
looks like it's just this petal, this petal, and this petal that are fairly dark. So it's these three. And we're going to go with this color. I'm going to add just a touch more blue to it. And a little bit of the neutral gray. Or neutral tint, I should say, not neutral gray. We do want some of that magenta color to be in there as well. We don't want it to be all dark. Okay, so I mixed it with my six, but I'm going to use my number two. Load my brush. Now, since I like to pull streaks towards me, I'm going to turn this around one more time. I apologize. But I want you to be able to see me do this. So again, it's this one, this one, and this one. Everything's dry. Good. And we're just going to add in a few more darks just to separate this out. just a tad. Yeah, this color is showing up, so that's good. I wasn't quite sure it was going to. Now this is wet on dry, so I'm not letting it soften in. I want it to be a nice line that you can see. A little bit more distinct, which is good. Just to help darken that a little bit. Again, give it that depth that we're looking for. And let's just do a little bit on this one so it kind of ties in the coloring. That's better. Now if I got that too dark, clean out my brush. Go back in and thin it out a little bit. for my small eradicator. There we go. Might still be wet, so I hate to push down on it too. Oh, that's better. Good. All right. Do that one more time. Just not the place for a real thick line. There we go. But I do want this coloring to match. It looked pretty dark before. Okay. That looks 
good. Okay. I think we're going to call this done. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit like so that YouTube knows that you like the things that I'm doing for you. This is also going to be step by step on Patreon, stroke by stroke I should say. And um, you can go right to patreon.com forward slash Colleen D. Aiken and sign up to be a patron. If you do, thank you so much for that. I do sincerely appreciate that. Um, this was a fun project to do. I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.